Hello, this is Barry, Kilowatt United 3X-Ray. Today's demo is of the MFJ223 antenna analyzer. The Chinese make a model uh, and its model number is a Kilo Victor Echo 60 Charlie. MFJ buys it and relabels it under their own uh, part number as a 223. Uh, this is on a 40 meter beam. To turn it on, very easy. Push the button on top and hold it and the system comes on. You can see my call letters in the center. You can program this through the system which is right there. Uh, you can change the language. It's an auto on off power. I have it set to on and obviously you saw my call sign. So we'll exit that screen and then we're going to go into the scan screen. That's by pushing this button. Now if you see the frequency right now it's 14 megahertz up on top and underneath the last zero there's a little yellow uh, marker that's letting you know you're dialing right down to the very last digit. As you look underneath you see what's called span that's 24 megahertz. If I push the scan button now it's gonna go from one end to the other from a 24 megahertz bandwidth. Well I don't want that it's too wide so I push that button now it's 48 even wider good for checking off center fed antennas or if you don't know where antenna is resonant at all, you'll know. We'll go one more. It's 300 kilohertz. Now that's the bandwidth I'm going to scan. To the right of it is VS V span, 600 kilohertz. The very last time I used this unit, I scanned 600 kilohertz. So that's kind of like a memory just to let you know. And I don't know if you can see it. But right over here, there's a tiny antenna and a uh, set of bars like you see on a cell phone. What that's for is the first bar is blinking. Uh, that means it is detecting some RF that's out on the antenna. Now, it's not much. I'm not transmitting. Uh, the first bar and the second bar, if they light, you're okay. You get any more than that, you're going to get inaccurate readings because the RF field is so strong. Uh, one of the uh, reasons you would have a strong uh, reading on here that you couldn't use it is if somebody's outside, let's say in a backyard, and they're using an HT. Uh, as much as the antenna is on 40 meters, you may pick up enough RF on that antenna and you'll show high on the bars and it'll be accurate. I've had this happen on the MFJ259 antenna analyzer where when I used to use packet I was making an antenna and I was in the backyard and the needles kept fluctuating and I thought I had a loose connections until I realized what it was. It was the packet station uh, that was transmitting on 2 meters even though I was on HF on 20 meters it was giving false readings on the uh, antenna analyzer. So now we're set up, if you look on top, actually 650 kilohertz is where we are. So what we're going to do is push this button a couple times, and you see the cursor moving to the left. Now it's under that last uh, digit, which is a zero. We're going to go up to 7 megahertz, and that's 7.650, but we want to get it down. So we'll put it underneath the 5. We'll dial it down 7432. We're going to go 7140. Now that's where we're going to make our scan, 300 kilohertz, uh, 7140. Now we push scan and let it go. And in a couple seconds, there's your reading. Now it's telling me the SWR at that frequency is 1.850, uh, resistance 60. 5.6 ohms reactance is 32.2. The downside of the reactance is it doesn't tell me plus or minus. And you can't just go by this and say it's on one side of the dip and the other side, so it's got to be plus and minus. Because what happens is it's not a perfect match, and your transmission line acts like a transformer. And along the different places of the transmission line, that number will actually change plus and minus, although it's what it's supposed to be at the antenna. So you would actually need a Smith chart to work your way backwards to find out what it is at the feed point, which is not hard to do. There's a lot of software out there to do that. But right now, we don't know at the end of this transmission line if that's a J32 or a minus J32. So we won't get into that because this really isn't that kind of analyzer to begin with. Uh, you'd want a different type of analyzer that does tell you plus and minus. Now what we do is I'm um, dialing down the frequency and you see the red line going down to the bottom of the dip and that's right around where it's resonant 70 
1.59 megahertz and the SWR reading is 1.29 to 1. Now if I do scan again, now it's going to center on that frequency. It'll do a rescan and it'll center on the frequency. And now you see it's 1.30 to 1, 705. And that's 1.3. I'm going to move a little bit. Now it's 1.29. 1.3, 1.29. That's where it shows it's resonant at the end of the transmission line, which is right here. Uh, now, another thing you can do is, uh, first of all, we'll go to graph. Now, what we're showing is wave Z. Now, that's going to uh, impedance. There is Z, 48.6. Punch it again. And uh, actually, R is a resistance, 47 ohms. And graph once more. And that's showing wave X. X is the reactance 12.3. Again, you don't know if it's plus or minus. Push once more, and now we're back to SWR. Now, if we back up by pushing that button, we're going to go to single. Now, we're going to do one frequency. Now, this went back to 14 megahertz, so we have to dial down. Let's go down to 7 megahertz right on the money. There's 7 megahertz right in the money. We're going to move the cursor. Uh, and now we're going to run and it's going to scan. So it's 7.000. It's telling me about 1.75 to 1 ohms. There's a resistance, there's a reactance. And now you'll see an S antenna on the bottom with this red bar. Well, that red bar has got to stay uh, below that plus 10. There's a plus 10 dB here, plus 20 dB. What it's doing is uh, it's reading RF that's in the atmosphere and going on out there. And if it gets too high, like it showed on that little antenna, like the cell phone, it's going to tell you you're getting an incorrect reading. And actually, if you get up between 10 and 20 dB in a plus side, you're overloading a unit and you should immediately stop. So let's get that frequency down. I'll start dialing. Oop, I went the wrong way. I'm sorry. As you see, the bar is changing. The SWR is coming down. As this frequency is going up, 70260. And the SWR is coming down. So it's continuously scanning that frequency. Uh, now we're at 1.28. And I'm turning now. It's 1.3 going back up. We'll go back down again. 1.28. 1.28. One point. It's flickering. 27 and 28. Now the reason we didn't get down this far on the other graph was this will sample at at frequencies in here but it's not one kilohertz at a time. It may be five or ten kilohertz at a time. I couldn't find documentation to tell you it's called points. I don't know how many points this does. Uh, in other words if it did a hundred points and you were scanning 100 kilohertz, well, you'd get a reading every 1 kilohertz. If it's 100 points and 200 kilohertz, obviously, you'd be getting a scan every, every other kilohertz. So I don't know what the points are on here, so I don't know exactly where it is. But seeing that I narrowed down the frequency and we're scanning just that frequency, now we can get a more accurate reading. Uh, it's all relative because it doesn't really make any difference. Where the antenna dips, it dips, and that's what you have to work with. But uh, I think that's a pretty neat feature. And to get out of this, obviously you hit return, and you're going back to the first screen. And now we have help screens in here if you want. So if you get confused and you don't have the manual, you can go down and everything is on here. If you have any questions, you can, you can go through it. And uh, let's hit one here. Enter general description. This tells you all about it. Exit. We'll go back. To turn the unit off, you have to be in this screen. Because when you hold this down and you're in other screens, it changes the frequency as far as the steps go. But to turn it off, you have to go back to this screen. So let's just scan one time. That's, And I'll show you. So we're going to scan again at 7140, a little high. So if you hold this down, it, it, it doesn't do anything. It's not going to let you turn it off. So what you have to do is hit return. When you hit return, you go to this screen. Now when you hold it down, the unit turns off. It's got a lithium battery inside. Uh, 14, I think it's 1.4 amp hour, which is pretty darn good. And it'll last a long time. If you have an MFJ 259, 269, uh, you know they're battery hogs and the batteries don't last long at all. You have to keep them charged. But this unit here is really great uh, as far as battery life goes. Now to charge the unit, underneath is a small USB port, a mini USB. 
it's the same thing you use on a normal cell phone an Android cell phone. It just plugs in and you plug it in the computer and that'll charge the battery. Also next to the jack is an LED red green. When it's red it's charging. When it's green it's finished charging. So there's an internal sensor inside to let you know when the battery is fully charged. Also if you look in the top left corner it says 100. Well the battery's charged to 100% because I just charged it last night. When you get the unit it's already pre-charged and you're ready to go so you can have some fun with it. Uh, it's not. I don't think it's fully charged but it's enough that you can take it out of the box, turn it on, and have fun with it right away. It's really a neat unit. I wanted something pocket size. Around here, I use the 259B MFJ, uh, but for portable, uh, I wanted something that would fit in my pocket. U-Kit makes a really nice one, which works similar to this. It's a model Foxtrot Golf Dash 01. The downside for the U-Kit is that there's a big knob on the front, and these are called soft keys. The U-Kit doesn't have any soft keys. So the U-Kit, you have to continuously push that button at different intervals, whether it's one second, three second, uh, to go through all of these features. It does pretty much the same. It's a little bit cheaper also. So. I'm not knocking it saying it's a bad unit. What I'm saying is to fit in my pocket, I don't want the knob sticking out the front, and I also want these soft keys to make it uh, so you can operate it a lot easier. Uh, I hope I was helpful to you. I, I hope you find this uh, video interesting. It was fun making it, and I've just been having a ball using this. Uh, 73, and if you get one, I hope you enjoy it. This is KU3X. Did it at all, did it all.